here's how you work with the list component. So in 11.1.1.7, if you actually take something and you drag it into the page, you won't see the option to add a list. Um, this is going to be fixed in future versions with a more uh, friendly way to do it. I'm going to show you a little trick that saves you some coding. So first of all, just so you know, you can actually go and pick up the list component um, from the component palette and just drag it over and put it on your page, like that, right? And then start developing an inside the list view, put a new list item and things like that. Okay, I'm, as you know, a lazy developer, so I'm not going to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to drag the employee view and drop it on the page as a read-only table. So this would actually give me a few other things because the table can have behavior like a single row selection um, and other things. So I just drop the table over here and I don't actually want to show a table so I'm going to remove it in a second. But the list component actually works pretty much like a table in terms of the binding to the backend. So by having the table on the page I get some benefits. For example, now I can actually go over and start adding stuff to my page. So let's add the list view. And again, inside the list view, we can add a list item. Okay. And what I can do now is start to copy things. So the table, for example, has the value coming from this expression language. I'm going to copy it into the list and provide it as the value for the list. Like this. So this is the collection model that would drive my list. The table, um, each column in here, right, has the value coming from somewhere. So if we actually click not on the column, but rather on the output text that shows something, you'll see there's a row first name. Okay, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to place it in my list item. Inside here, I'm going to, for example, take an output text. So let's remove the search here. Um, and we'll pick up an output text component. Bring it into my list item. Okay. And the value for it is going to be row name. Now row actually refers to a variable. So right now the list view still doesn't define a variable, so what I probably want to do is go over here and define the variable to be row. This way we'll know what to pick up here. The other aspect is that you might want to have the list actually control something in your page, so actually you want to have a selection listener for the list. Again, a nice thing that happens when you define the table as I did before is that if you look up the selection listener here, you'll actually find it, so you can actually pick it up and bring it from the table property into your list view property and just drop it into the selection listener like that. And um, you probably want to also turn the selection of the list to be the same thing as you did in the table. So this is how you basically go about defining the list. At this point you can actually go in to your source, minimize your table like that and delete it. Okay. So here's your page, you can save it and run it. So there you have it, the list, and you can actually select things. Now how do you actually know that something is selected? And um, you probably want to, want to show this selection in the same page. So let's go and do this in our application. Um, we can take and bring a panel splitter, for example, into our page. Like this. Take our list component, put it in the first section of the splitter, and take the employees, put it in the second part, possibly as a read-only form. Actually, so we don't need a submit button. So that's your page now. Um, of course, you can work in the design mode if you prefer to. And run your page. Okay. 
So in your page loads now, you still don't have the synchronization between the two parts of the screen, but that should be quite simple. Go over, select your form over here, and set the partial trigger okay, to point to your list view. Save it, compile it, and go back, and refresh your page. And when you're clicking on things in your list, the right side gets updated. So this is a basic example of how you create a list component and work with it in your application.